Hello and welcome. So today we're going to take a look at a master built strat. Now master built guitars by definition are handcrafted by just a select handful of Fender's finest luthiers. This particular one was made in 2015 by Jason Smith. It's a one-off guitar based on a 1963 body with a nice chunky 65 neck and the pickups are hand wound by Fender's master winder Josefina Campos. So what we're going to do today is have a proper close-up look at this guitar, give it a tear down, get the neck off, have a good look at that, look at the body routings, the electronics and all that sort of stuff. Then we'll put it back together, get some fresh strings on and plug her in, see how she sounds. And just very quickly, this is the first of a small series on master built guitars. We've got a couple more coming up soon, so please stay tuned for those and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of those. Also, if you are a current subscriber, thank you very much for your continued support and um, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can be uh, updated as soon as any new videos come out. That'd be fantastic. And uh, without further ado, let's go. So here's the Jason Smith strap then in its brown Tolex g, g case. Let's take a closer look. So here it is, based on a 1963 Strat and it's in a aged nitrocellulose finish, Fiesta Red. So I'll give you a quick look over it now and then we'll have a closer look and get the pit guard off and look at the quality of the, um, of the master built electronics. I've never actually had the pit guard off this one, so uh, this will be quite an interesting exercise for us. As I say, it's a 1963, and the pickups are hand wound by the beautiful Josefina Campos. And the bridge and sorry, the middle and the neck are 5k, and then there's a nod to the uh, overwound bridge pickup, which is 6.5k for slightly hotter output. It also has um, a tone control for the bridge pickup, plus it has a five-way switch, which I actually prefer. That suits me much better for live performance, so I, I'm not worried about having the three-way position switch particularly. There's uh, an Indian rosewood board on here with medium jumbo frets, and you'll see it's based on a later 63 because the, uh, the screw position just here is slightly further down in the earlier models. Plus it also has a laminated rosewood neck rather than a slab board, which you'd have had on perhaps a 62, for example. So nine and a half inch radius board, really, really chunky neck. It's based on SRV's neck, um, not his personal neck, I'm sure, but of, of his number one guitar. Um, it's a large C profile based on a like a 65. It's actually chunkier than my SRV strats. I've got three SRV strats, which is perhaps a story for another video, but this is bigger than all of those. It's the, it's the chunkiest. It really is the whole kind of baseball bat neck that you would tend to think about. But look at those, those edges, how they've been rounded off through the years of play. Beautiful. So that's the front. We'll have a look at the back. As I say, not too much relicking on this. It's the uh, aged Fiesta Red. They've done a fantastic job, I have to say. A friend of mine has a genuine original Fiesta Red from 64. And when you put them side by side, you really can barely tell the difference in the color shading. It's, it's really quite remarkable. So it might come out as looking a little bit pink. It is actually quite a pinky color, but that's the genuine color that it would have gone. Obviously we've got the uh, slightly aged parchment single ply plate on the back. Then we've got the neck, which has got a quite a glossy finish to it. But actually once you get hot and sweaty and plain, I actually quite like it, so that's cool. And obviously you've got your aged tuners and Jason Smith's signature on there. So that's the guitar. We'll have a closer look at the internals in a moment, but first we'll just have a quick look inside. So we've got the uh, the trem springs bag there's the aged tip on the on the tremolo arm there also obviously you've got the certificate of authenticity and um, notepad uh, sorry instruction book and stuff and the custom shop picks in there so that's all fantastic now i as i say this was my number one guitar for a couple of years absolutely loved playing it and it's got one of those necks and indeed the um 
the kind of action of the pickups, it just makes you want to strangle it. It's, it's amazing. Um, I was fronting a blues band primarily when I was using this. And it really is one of those guitars that you just want to, <laughs> you just kind of want to murder it. You know, some, some guitars want to just be tickled and some of them just want, want you to grab hold of them and give them some stick. And that's, that's kind of what this one is for me. Um, and it really is a beast. I love its bits. So anyway, enough of me. Uh, we'll get the pick guard off and have a look at the electronics. Took a little bit of getting out. It hasn't actually been undone since um, since it came since it came to me for sure, um, possibly even since it was made. But there's the date. You can see the, uh, the fifth. Sorry, the uh, yeah yeah fifteenth of October. No, I'll start again. <laughs> actually, it started October two thousand and fifteen, um, and there's Jason Smith's signature on there with the serial number, um, various other information and um so that's the neck off and we'll um we'll move on and have a look at the body now so a bit of grime commensurate with um years of use under the uh, back cover there Incidentally, with any guitar, it's always best to put the screws aside in the same order they came out. Not just because they can be different threads or different lengths, but of course, um, especially on an older guitar, certain screws will have, have more wear, more perhaps rust, grime and sweat and everything else. So it just makes the appearance more, uh, more sort of genuine if you keep everything back where it belongs. Right, so there's the, uh, the insides, obviously. Um, Fiesta Red and various sort of dust and grime in there. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was actually placed in there. It may well have been, knowing Fender's attention to detail. Um, or it could have, it could be my belly button fluff, who knows. Um, but anyway, that's the uh, that's the rear trim cover. And you can just see the, the age and the patina as well on the, well, on everything, but on the, on the screws there. Um, it's right, okay, good. So we'll move on and have a look underneath the pit guard. Right, so that's the 11 screws out from the, uh, the pit guard. You can see also Jason Smith's signature in there with the serial number for the guitar. And this is actually dated November 15, the body. So, um, I think the neck may have been, it was made in October. He got onto the body by November and probably assembled it around that time. So let's have a look gently underneath the, uh, the pit guard. And we may have to move the camera in a minute. Because obviously we need to be super, super careful. Okay, let's uh, take a closer look. So here's the body then. The, uh, the neck cavity is signed by Jason Smith, plus it's dated, of course, there, November 15, with the reference number for the guitar. Also in here, you'll notice the JS. All the master builders have their initials embossed. Um, it's not a, um, a vanity thing. It's to, protect, it's to protect potential buyers against fakes or forgeries because it's not just the relicin that's so, that's so good on these guitars. Um, the actual guitars are measured, you know, critically and the, the body contours ver varied from year to year, even on strats. So they are they are sub superb copies and it would be quite easy otherwise perhaps to pass one off as something it's not. The only way to get rid of that, of course, yes, you could fill them, but if you sounded back, you'd see the outline of the initials anyway. So you'd have to really route them out. And then why would you route a pickup cavity out? 
um, unless you were making it into a humbucker, in which case all bets are off because you've butchered it anyway and had to change the pickups and the scratch plate, so it'd be pointless. Okay, so interestingly for the master built guitars, of course all the work is done on the on the parts that you see. And as I said, I've played this guitar a lot, so some of the wear is mine, but the vast, vast majority of it isn't. But once you get inside the actual cavity, um, there's no relic in, well, there's much limited relic in, um, because of course this wouldn't have been exposed to the elements in the same way, being that it was protected by the pit guard. Okay, so moving on to the electronics then. Here she is with the, um, the fully screened scratch plate as of, this 1963. I've got this on my own um, original 63. Um, by the way, please comment uh, if you'd like to see a comparison of this versus a genuine 1963 Strat. That could be quite good fun. Um, a very tidy job, as you would imagine, for a master-built Strat. And there's Josefina's work. You can see those there from what's that end of 14 and February uh, 15. And there's the, the Hotter Bridge pickup just there. That's the 6.5K. And there's the neck and middle, which are the 5K pickups. Again, obviously the vintage cloth wiring as it would have been. And the old cap there too. As I said earlier, this is a five-way switch. It's been on there since new. Um, well, since the guitar was made, it was specified with a five-way switch. Just a bit more usable, certainly for me and CTS pots there, exactly as nature intended. And I'll check the dates. Let me just try and zoom in a second. So yeah, there you go, 1520. Can't read that one, obviously the 250K pots. Um, that one, oh yeah, 1520, there we go. So yeah. Okay, 20th week of 2015, so what's that? End of May, early June, something like that. So there we go, so that's all, that all corresponds perfectly well. And uh, beautiful guitar. Okay, so let's get some, well, put this thing back together, get some strings on, and plug her in, have a listen. Just a quick one at this stage, when you're refitting the neck, just put them on in a crisscross pattern, just to pull the neck back in squarely. Don't over tighten them and if you feel any resistance from the screws just back them out a touch and put them put them in nice and squarely after all they are only wood you don't want to strip it also there's no benefit in cranking it like your Dwayne Johnson they only need to be on hold it uh, firm enough just to hold the neck on and just nip them up that's all they need okay here are the strings so we're running 1149s today I buy mine in bulk just to try and keep the cost down a little bit but, uh, but there's, there's the gauge there for what I generally use, especially on this guitar. As I said earlier, it's got a really chunky neck and it also has the highest action of any of my guitars. It's, it's, uh, it's fabulous, I love it. <laughs> I actually really like it like that. Years ago, I used to have the, the strings almost sort of running across the fret, fret wire, um, but I really don't mind on a guitar like this. I tune it down half a step and just dig in and give it the beans and that's what it likes best.
I hope you enjoyed the video so thank you for watching if you are a current subscriber thank you very much for your support a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and if you are new to the channel please consider subscribing we've got quite a few great rare and interesting guitars on this channel and this is the first of three master built guitar videos that we'll be doing in the near future so don't forget to hit that notifications bell and in the meantime see you soon thanks again